Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Last episode, we were talking about why HMOs are responsible to Nigerians, why they are accountable to Nigerians. This episode, we'll be talking about why healthcare facilities are responsible and accountable to Nigerians. I'm sure as you're sitting down there, my friends, you have questions burning in your heart to ask healthcare providers, isn't it? Yes. But let me first ask you, let's know if we've taken learnings from this program. Who are healthcare providers? Hospitals. It's not loud enough. I only had been that Hospitals. Noise. Thank you. On the program with me, representing the hospitals, Dr. Adeyeye Aribabu. Thank you. Uh, doctor, you remember how we do what we do. Your right hand, please. You promise to tell the truth. I. The o yes. Doctor Adiye Arigbabu. Yes. Promise to tell the promise truth. Promise to tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. <laughs> Thank you, Benga. Doctor Arigbabu. For the benefit of viewers and my friends in the house, once again, shed light on what health care facilities mean. Health care facilities simply mean any structure, including the personnel, that give therapy or care to seekers or those people who seek care. And when we say seek care, seek health care delivery. So it could be in form of a hospital. It could be in form even of a diagnostic center. It could be in form of a pharmacy. It is not just mentioning hospitals. Facilities that take care of health care delivery are known generally to come under the canopy of hospitals. But the truth is that we are primary care giver, we have secondary care giver. And pharmacy, diagnostic services, and all of such, they all belong to health care facilities. How do you interrelate between diagnostics, between pharmacies, between, you know, all of them? How do you interrelate, and how does it affect the common man? on the street in terms of quality health care delivery? Yes. The caregiver generally known to the entire population, Nigerians as we are, people all over the world, is uh, synonymous with the hospital. Albeit, we could have diagnostic centers under one shop stop. For example, hospital is there and the diagnostic center is right in-house. You could also have pharmacy in-house. You could have a department in-house, in a hospital, for example. And you could also have standalone facilities, standalone laboratories, standalone pharmacies. But for the benefit of our people, under National Health Insurance Scheme, for example, issues pertain to diagnostic services like laboratory, like pharmacies, and the like. Physiotherapy, they all belong to secondary care giver, secondary care facility. Whereas clinics and hospitals, in the real clinical aspect of caregiving, is going to take care of primary care effect. You could also have the hospital itself registered under secondary care, where you can take care of issues more than just malaria, typhoid, or other. Once you graduate to taking surgery, obstetric and gynecology, kidney matters, cancer cases, and name them, you begin to talk about, oh, that can be a secondary care hospital. That can be a tertiary care hospital. So all of these facilities put together are called 
healthcare facilities. Thank you. Now, here. Now, here, don't forget, thank you, we're talking about health insurance. Dr. Arik Babu, have you at any time have to turn back a patient from your hospital? I say hospital, I know that's healthcare facility. I say hospital for the benefit of those listening to us. Have you at any time had to turn back a patient seeking medical care from your hospital and the patient is carrying NHIS card? Uh, ordinarily, by the ethics of our profession, we will not be expected to that's turn back ethics. any hospital. But have you any, turned any, back? Early. That's the ethics. But have you turned In back? my facility, for example, I have not turned back one. And I know we preach it that no one should be turned back. And we even say, even at the worst scenario, when issues of money or you are even a wrong person who wants to assess that head there, maybe it's not even a facility you have chosen. You have wrongly come in there. We begin to wonder first, if it's a life-threatening condition the person has brought, save that life first. It, it, it looks like you are asking doctor, Dr. Ariba Buhu himself. But since he's vice president, president, or guy at the top of this uh, organization of mm -hmm. hospitals put together that we call HMO, or what do we call them? Healthcare providers. Healthcare providers. Have you had instances, not in your own place, but in other places of Okay, I have registered for NHIS. I have my card. They say I'm supposed to come here. But because that, us, that health caregiver has a problem with uh, HMO, they have said, we can't treat you. And that person has to go elsewhere to go and pay, from, to go and pay cash from his or her pocket. Do, do we have those kind of things arising? And what causes it? Thank you. Issues do arise. And uh, it might be, for example, you have assessed or you have come to seek care in a facility you have not chosen or where your name is not registered. It might even be people wanting to abuse privilege, for example, probably trying to give card to a relation or a relative to come and assess care. And at times too, seeking what is not covered under the benefit package. Somebody could even walk in at times and say, Doctor, see, I am here this morning. I want a chest history. It's even the one wanting to dictate to the doctor what he or she is looking for. At that level, issues will arise. And uh, those that arise because of monetary uh, issues, yes, they do come up. But because we are all working toward the same goal, wanting the scheme to survive or succeed, we don't want that end user, we don't want that patient to go back with wrong impression. We just want to do a cover-up. When we really know that issues that pertain to money may have been involved. And what do we mean? Delayed payment of capitation. Capitation is supposed to be prepaid at the commencement or before the commencement of a new month. If that is to be paid and you are receiving something to be paid on the first, you are getting it on 25th, on 30th, or even in another month, it means the principle of insurance has been abused because that capitation is not prepaid. It's like you having an accident with a vehicle that you have not paid the premium. And you want to assess the insurance company to come and give you another vehicle. They say because you have failed to pay your premium, you are not entitled to. But because the insurance of a vehicle and that of a human being is not the same thing, we look at the ethics and we say, save that life first. Then we talk about issues of money. But beyond that, legal issues can be involved. I have not been permitted by law to attend to certain things. But you want to force me to do it. If I do it, even my certificate may be at risk. At that level, I may need to turn you back with apology. Not because I want you to die. Not because I want you to suffer morbidity and mortality. But because I need to also tell you that maybe my own practice and my certificate may be at risk. So we begin to exchange uh, issues and discussions. But beyond that, that enrollee must be educated, must be taught. There must be advocacy. There must be enlightenment. It's a new or relatively alien program or project, and we must teach one another. In America, that you think of, for example, they still have their issues. In UK, they have their issues. In Nigeria, why must we be an exemption? But beyond that, 
times that we are worried is when the teaching hospitals have been turned to primary caregivers. It's a common complaint to HMO and providers. It's only in Nigeria you jump up from your bedroom, you scratch your head and you say, oh, this malaria, let me go and treat it at Lutz. In a neuropsychiatric hospital, people go in there to see NHIS signboard. In a psychiatric hospital to come and start treating malaria, they built a structure there for primary care treatment. And we are saying it is not in the right direction. You can only find that in Nigeria. It's not possible in any other country. But by and large, we are discussing, we are discussing to the extent that primary for primary, secondary for secondary, tertiary for tertiary. Thank you, Thank you very much. We'll take a short break now because we need to give an opportunity to our doctor in the house to give us health tips. We'll be right back. <laughs>